Hi everyone. In today's showcase I will demonstrate how you can perform an end-to-end -end server migration with UiPath IT Automation. Uh, to the left you can see our VMware environment setup. Uh, the to-be-migrated to uh, virtual machine, uh, Windows Server 2012. It is used as a database server. Our VM templates. Uh, we will be using the 2016 one and the network file share uh, where we'll export the backup data. On the right side of the screen we have the actual workflow that performs the migration and uh, we will be running it from an orchestrator tenant uh, where uh, I've configured a robot that runs in the same on-prem data center as the targeted servers. As part of the migration process we will be doing the following. Uh, export the Windows Server 2012 databases, the computer name, and local admins uh, users list. Uh, and they will be uh, exported to CSV files uh, in our uh, network file share. We'll create a new Windows uh, Server 2016, recreate the local admins, change the computer name to the one we see uh, here, and join the new server to an Active Directory uh, domain. Afterwards, we'll proceed with the SQL Server installation done, done silently from the file share, followed by uh, the database backup imports. Okay, now let's start the workflow. All right, so it is running. Okay, so we already see the uh, exported uh, data from the old server. Uh, after the export is done, it will be also shut down, powered off. And we already see the uh, deployment of the new uh, 2016 server uh, in progress. The export um, the data export is done with our VMware out-of-the-box official IT automation activities that uh, enable us to easily uh, create automations for uh, this type of uh, use cases. We have a very powerful activity uh, called Run Programming VM that enables us to run commands inside VMware servers uh, without having remoting uh, enabled and in our case uh, we, we executed this uh, to get the computer name, users list and then export it to the local file share. We can see that the 2012 server is also powered off. The virtual machine creation it's uh, powered by the, our create VM from uh, template activity. Uh, as you can see here on the left, the left, the parameters are really easy to understand. Uh, you specify the VM name, uh, from what template you want to create it, if you want to power on the virtual machine after it's, uh, um, it's uh, deployed. And we get as an output the virtual machine object from where we can access different uh, properties of the VM, such as um, yeah, its name, power state, etc. So the new server is being created, and after it will be ready, yep, we see the logs as well, after it, it is ready, we will wait for its services to be uh, running, we need to make sure that uh, VMware Tools is in running state and also we need to make sure that uh, the new server um, has a value for its DNS name, meaning that uh, the, the network um, uh, connectivity is uh, active. Uh, we need that for, for it to be able to access the data from the local uh, file share. While it's not ready, we have a delay in place that um, waits for 10 seconds and uh, it retries. 
uh, afterwards. After the VM is ready, we will be copying the files from uh, the network share locally on the new server in ctemp and then proceed to recreate the local uh, admin users change the computer name and then do a restart for it to apply after that's done we will be joining the computer to uh, to an active directory. In our case, it's called uh, deskover.local. And we have an active directory uh, activity package uh, and uh, it's very powerful. And among other operations related to users and groups, uh, we also have out of the box activities for joining and unjoining computers to, uh, uh, to domains. And as you can see, now the workflow is uh, waiting for uh, the VM to be ready. The VMware tools are already running, but ah, now the networking is also ready. Okay, so it should proceed soon to the next step and uh, yeah, try to transfer the network files locally. It's doing that. The databases are 50 megabytes and the CSV is are really small. Okay, the files were copied locally. Now it's recreating the local admins and it will proceed with uh, the other AD related steps. Changing computer name and restarting. And as you can see in the tasks area in VMware, the guest OS shutdown was initiated, it's now complete. And a power on will also be initiated shortly. After this sequence where we recreate the users, the admin users and uh, join the computer to the domain, we proceed to the SQL Server deployment uh, part of our process. We will be uh, silently installing uh, SQL Server from a network file share. We're leveraging uh, any configuration file for this. Uh, this will run silently in the background. And um, afterwards, when that's ready, we will be importing the exported databases uh, to the new to the new server. Okay, it's waiting for the services to be ready. Okay, DNS name is here. We're using PowerShell uh, to invoke the silent installation. Okay, it has proceeded to installing the SQL Server and we see that it has successfully joined the computer to the desk over lot local uh, AD domain. We see that also in the vSphere console in the DNS name and now it's installing the um, SQL server silently in the background for us. The, uh, the SQL server could be included in the template and that would cut the execution time of this workflow in half. Currently it takes around 10 minutes for an end-to-end uh, execution of this process uh, and uh, with SQL Server including the template it would take around half that time 
and you would you would do that normally uh, when you want to do many server migrations uh, but for the purpose of this showcase i wanted to also demonstrate um, application uh, deployment packaging uh, as part of uh, the demo but again for uh, an actual production server migration scenario um, that includes SQL Server, you would want to include that in the template uh, directly. All right, so after uh, it uh, finishes installing SQL Server silently in the background for us, uh, it, uh, it will import the three databases that are copied from the file share locally on the server. And afterwards, it will uh, proceed to perform a cleanup and uh, it will delete the migration files from the network file share uh, so that uh, yeah, the environment is uh, ready for another execution. The import of uh, the databases will be performed using the same run programming VM official activity. Uh, and uh, we are leveraging in this, uh, in this case, the SQL CMD program. And we're invoking it with uh, yeah, standard arguments for importing backup files. And we do this three times for, uh, for all our three databases. The workflow can be easily upgraded so that uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter the name of the database. You can just import, uh, export all, all the databases of the SQL server. And yeah, with the for each, you could import all of them uh, from uh, the file share in our demo. Uh, we've chosen to specify the database names explicitly. So importing the data, the databases, deleted the temporary migration files and server migration is complete. Now let's do a check on the server, on the new server. So we see from the console that it was successfully joined to the domain already. Let's also check the other deployment steps. So I want to see if we have uh, SQL services. Yep, they're running. Let's see the database. Import SQL server data. Yep, we see here the three databases were imported uh, successfully. Uh, let's check out the computer name, DB server demo, uh, the same like the 2012 server and this is joined to the uh, discover domain. So that uh, that part works successfully. And let's see our local users. Yep. So the creation of the local admins, the recreation of the local admins that were identified in the Windows Server 2012 was also uh, successful. All right, well, this is it. Thank you very much.